Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here today. Did we just get a huge tease for a Kylo Ren movie? It sounds crazy with everything going on in the Star Wars universe, but it might just be the case. Before we get into today's news though, please be sure to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so. I post every single day on the channel, you don't want to miss my updates, and of course we do lore, theory, and so much more. Also be sure to hit that bell, but no more jibber jabber, let us dive straight into this. In the midst of what has been a very quiet period for Star Wars following Ahsoka Season 1, we do actually have a piece of news. This comes from Variety.com. They sat down with Sean Levy and spoke about Deadpool 3, Stranger Things, and his upcoming Star Wars movie. In the past, when we did have updates for it, it was rather conceptual, and even he was uncertain when, or even if, it was going to happen. Well, in this new interview, he confirms it is happening, even though it might be quite a while away off. It was not one of the ones announced at Star Wars Celebration. In 2026, we have the sequel to The Rise of Skywalker, and that is the movie by Sharmino Bechanoi, following Rey Skywalker's Jedi Academy. The one after that is going to take place 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, looking at the story of the first ever Jedi, the Prime Jedi. That movie is by James Mangold. And the third movie confirmed is Dave Filoni's Mandoverse era film. But there are others in the works by Sean Levy, Taika Waititi, and a couple of other rumoured directors as well. While now talking about his upcoming Star Wars film, he reflects on what the decision was like by Lucasfilm and what we can expect. In his own words, he says, quote, When Kathleen Kennedy brought me on board to make a Star Wars movie, her central mandate to me was, I want a Sean Levy movie. I want a story and a tone that reflects you and your taste and what you bring to your movies with a Star Wars story. So he says he felt extremely empowered, although he adds the caveats were in the early days because the development process was abruptly paused due to the strikes. But I feel very empowered, he says, to trust my instincts in the development of this story and movie. He was then asked if his work on Deadpool 3 was good practice for his Star Wars film. He reflects that he's going to go into development of his Star Wars project with the same level of optimism, and hopes his faith in the project and instincts will be allowed to lead the way. But he was very happy that Kathleen Kennedy had faith in him, something which contradicts what a lot of the narrative in Hollywood has been when it comes to directors and their relationship with creative differences when working at Lucasfilm. And then we get a very juicy quote. He was asked if his relationship with Adam Driver has anything to do with the kind of Star Wars movie we're going to see, notably if it's going to be related to Kylo Ren and possibly a prequel to The Force Awakens. Now before we look at what he said, Jon Favreau said he wants to bridge the gap between episodes 6 and 7, he's doing that with the various Mandoverse shows and Dave Filoni's film. But Ben Solo turning into Kylo Ren is several years down the line, and it would be awesome if a different director and a different writer explored this story, a story that we've seen in the comics, that's been hinted at in multiple projects, and Sean Levy seemed reluctant to answer this definitively. He says, quote, Your word's not mine. As you know, Adam Driver is a buddy, and I've always been a huge fan of Kylo Ren, but no comment. Now while this is very vague, there are a couple of things to consider which point towards the project being Kylo Ren centric. In 2020, there were rumours that Adam Driver was approached and that Lucasfilm wanted to do more with the character. The idea of a Kylo Ren project for Disney Plus or a movie was floating round. And looking at his track record, something that I find very intriguing is that every time Sean Levy says no comment, it seems to mean something. Is that the case here as well? On top of being friends with Adam Driver, he's also worked with Finn Wolfhard, who many Stranger Things and Star Wars fans alike believe is the perfect casting for a young Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo, that transitionary period. Somewhat related but also adds fuel to this is the rumour we've seen for over a year now that Millie Bobby Brown, who also is on Stranger Things, is in talks with Lucasfilm for a Star Wars project. Could this be Sean Levy's film and is she going to get involved? Sean Levy as executive producer on Stranger Things did a phenomenal job and if he brought some of those actors into the Star Wars universe, I would be over the moon. Given fan suggestions, theories, and speculation that Millie might play Padme Amidala or a young Princess Thea, I'm not too sure how she would fit in to a Kylo Ren movie set nearly three decades after the original trilogy, so I think she's going to play a new character if she does come into it, maybe Kylo Ren's first love at the Jedi Academy before he destroyed it all. And just one other consideration, given the expiration of the Knights of Ren earlier in the timeline in the comics, and of course later in the sequel trilogy, could they feature into a Ben Solo movie as well, how Kylo Ren took charge of the Knights? 
A lot of the specifics until 2023 of Ben Solo's transformation into Kylo were very murky. It wasn't until the book Star Wars Timelines that we learned definitively it was 28 ABY. The Star Wars Timelines book also reveals that Ben's fall to the dark side took place in the same year that Leia Organa left the New Republic after it came out that Darth Vader was her father. It was really a disastrous year for the Skywalkers, but one which I think would be amazing to explore. The reason the Darth Vader reveal is so important is because as we know from The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren became obsessed with mimicking his grandfather and following in those footsteps. It's just pretty amazing Anakin didn't appear to him as a Force ghost. That would have been a moment we would have loved to have seen in 7, 8 or 9. Now something really important to keep in mind is that according to Skywalker Family at War, Ben Solo was really mentally affected by the fact he wasn't told by Luke or his mother Leia about being related to Darth Vader. He found out through a hollow net. This caused a lot of distress, aggravation and conflicted feelings. And the person who jumped on this and saw the opportunity to twist a young mind was Snoke. There is a lot of great stuff that could be explored and could tie into the late stage Mandoverse shows or films further down the line after season 4 and maybe a season 5. As we get nearer and nearer to the sequel trilogy, this could be a fitting project. We've often spoken about the Shadow Council, the build-up to the New Republic vs the First Order, which starts with the Imperial Remnant, we've already met all the big players, and the one that ties directly into the story of the sequel trilogy is Hux's dad. And as I say, across Mandoverse era projects, Dave Filoni's Star Wars movie over the years will get closer and closer to the time period of the sequels. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it, I think it's in Lucasfilm's best interest to lean into this time period and give it some context, don't shy away from it. Some fans say it's best to avoid any association with these characters whatsoever, but I disagree. And I don't think avoiding them does any favours for this time period, which Lucasfilm likes to double down on. So if they want to do that, give these characters to other directors, other creatives, someone who is not J.J. Abrams or Ryan Johnson, and see what they can do, what kind of magic they can bring out of these characters and these roles. I'm optimistic about the future of these characters, and if done right, I believe they can truly turn the tide of our perception of the sequel trilogy, at least those of us who are not too big on it. So how would Adam Driver feel about this? Does he want to return to the galaxy far, far away? Well, he stated on a couple of occasions that he enjoys the character of Kylo and wants to see more stories with him, but it depends on the story. He won't just sign up for the sake of it. But now I turn it over to you. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Would you like to see a Sean Levy Star Wars movie that kind of has a more tragic feel to it? The fall of Ben, the rise of Kylo, and the end of Luke's Academy, which we did see the start of in the Book of Boba Fett. And is Sean the right guy to write and direct it? If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.